All right, this video is going to be on um, reference angles, but before we get to the definition of a reference angle, I want to talk about uh, the signs of cosine and sine values. All right, so remember when you have an angle, say it's up here in quadrant one, right, and this is your angle, then um, your R value, remember, is always going to be positive, right, for no matter where your angle is at, your R's, R is always positive, but your X value and your Y values could be positive or negative, right? So if you're in quadrant one, your X value is positive, your Y value is positive, and since cosine is defined to be X divided by R, cosine is positive. The, co the value of the cosine is positive. And if um, and the sine value of your angle uh, is also positive because sine is defined to be y over r, right? So if your angle is in quadrant one, if, if any angle is between zero and ninety degrees, both the cosine value and the sine value are both positive numbers. But if we're over here in quadrant two, so we have an angle going out like this, um, the x value is negative, right? So the so therefore the cosine value of that angle is going to be a negative number, right? The y value is positive, so the sine value is still going to be a positive number. So if you've got any angle that's between 90 degrees and 180 degrees, or between pi over 2 and pi radians, then the cosine of that angle has to be negative, and the sine of that angle has to be positive. And if we're down here in quadrant 3, the cosine of the angle is negative, and the sine of the angle is also negative, right? because both the x value and the y values are negative. Okay, and then if you're in quadrant four, the cosine value is positive and the sine value is negative. So the way to kind of remember these is that um, depending on where your angle is located, it could be in quadrant one, two, three, or four, the sine of the cosine and the sine values um, correspond to uh, what the x and y values correspond to, right? So think of x as going with the cosine and y as going with sine in terms of if uh, sine and cosine are positive or negative numbers. And then you can determine if the sine and cosine values are positive or negative, right? All right, so let's, uh, let's get on to reference angles. All right, so associated with every non-quadrantal angle in standard position is, these, is a positive acute angle called its reference angle. So for example, this would be theta, right? That would be your angle. And, and we would say it's in quadrant two. So this right here, we're going to call theta prime. That angle is an acute angle, and um, it's going to be referred to as the reference angle. Right, so all of these have a reference angle associated with them. So here would be theta, and then theta prime, or the reference angle, would be that angle right there. Okay, do one more. All right, so here is theta, and here is theta prime. Okay, so make note, theta prime, the reference angle, right, is made by the terminal side of theta and the x-axis, right? So notice we got the, between the x-axis and the terminal side, between the x-axis and the terminal side, we've got an angle, and between the x-axis and the terminal side, we've got our angle. That's going to be referred to as the reference angle, and it will always be between 0 and 90 degrees, always. All right, so now let's look at uh, an example. All right, so find the reference angle of 212 degrees. Well, what quadrant is 212 degrees in? So you kind of picture where 212 would be. So this would be 180, this would be 270, so we're over here somewhere, right? That's 212 degrees is in quadrant three. So the reference angle has to be this situation right here. That's the reference angle. Okay, so 212 degrees would be this, minus 180 degrees would give you this little bit that's left over, right? 180 degrees, and that gives you 32 degrees. So the reference angle for 212 degrees is 32 degrees. Right? In this case, you found it because we're in quadrant 3, so you have to do all of the angle minus 180, and that would leave you what's left over. Okay, so what if we had, say, 2 pi over 3? All right, so again, you ask yourself, what quadrant is 2 pi over 3 in? All right, well, 
is this is in radians. So there's pi over three. So then two pi over three would be over here somewhere. Okay, so we are in quadrant two. Okay. That is two pi over three. So then what would the reference angle be? Well the reference angle would be from here to here, from the terminal side to the x-axis. How do you think we're going to figure that out? Well, if we if we know all the way over here, which would be pi, right, pi radians, minus the 2 pi over 3, then that's going to leave behind the blue stuff here, which is just pi over 3. So the reference angle for the second one down here is just pi over 3 radians. So if, you're, if your angle's in quadrant 3, then we have to do the entire angle minus the 180 degrees. Or if we're in radians, it would have been the entire angle in radians minus pi, right? And then if we're in quadrant 2, you do 180 degrees minus the original angle. Or you do, if we're in radians, you do pi minus the original angle. And then that leaves behind what you're, what you're looking for. So what about this one? All right, so we've got 150 degrees. So the reference angle is 180 degrees minus 150 degrees, which equals 30 degrees. So what happens here is that the sine of 150 degrees is going to be the same thing as the sine of 30 degrees, except possibly its sine being positive or negative. Right? So for example, since the sine of 30 degrees is equal to a half, right? Then we go over and we say, all right, so the sine of 150 degrees, well, that also has to equal a half because we're in quadrant two. Your angle is in quadrant two, and sine of any angle that's in quadrant two, the sine value is a positive number, as opposed to, say, let's do the cosine. Cosine of 30 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2. So the cosine of 150 degrees, well, since we're in quadrant 2, cosine's negative in quadrant 2. It's negative, the square root of 3 over 2. See what I'm getting at? We can find the sines and cosines of angles larger than 90 degrees by using the reference angle, which will be an angle that's less than 90 degrees, uh, and then just knowing what quadrant that our angle is located in. Okay, so since we were in quadrant two here, sine's positive, cosine's negative, so the sine of 150 degrees was a positive one half, and the cosine of 150 degrees was negative, the square root of three over two. All based on the knowledge that we knew what the sine of the reference angle was and the cosine of the reference angle was. All right, try this one. So we got five pi over three. Reference angle is what? Well. All the way around the circle would be 2 pi minus 5 pi over 3 leaves behind pi over 3, right? Because this is 6 pi over 3. So 6 pi over 3 minus 5 pi over 3 leaves us pi over 3. So the reference angle is pi over 3. So since sine of pi over 3 is equal to square root of 3 over 2, the sine of 5 pi over 3 is equal to, since our angle's in quadrant four, the value of sine is a negative number, so it would be negative the square root of three over two. Since the cosine of pi over three is equal to a half, then the cosine of five pi over three is equal to, well, we notice that we're in quadrant four and cosine is a positive number in quadrant four so it's the same thing as the cosine of pi over three which is a half All right you kind of follow what i'm getting at we can always get a reference angle the reference angle will always be between zero and ninety degrees so if we know the sine and cosine of thirty degrees forty five degrees and sixty degrees or in radians the sine and cosine of pi over six radians pi over four radians and pi over three radians then we can use that knowledge to find the sine and cosine of any other angle where the reference angle is one of those three that we're talking about. Okay, Pi over three, pi over six, pi over four. Provided that we also know what quadrant that our angle is. And that goes back to the very first thing. Know that if you're whatever quadrant you're in, the value of sine or cosine will be positive or negative. All right, that's it. Study well. Please let me know if you have any questions.